Welcome to Touch Technology Review. Today I'm going to be demonstrating how you can tether a Canon EOS camera on the brand new Microsoft Surface Pro. I have the Surface Pro 2017 edition here. It's the i5 processor with eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. So it's a middle of the line unit and I think that this is going to be adequate for tethering and capturing photos in the field and also previewing video, so using it as a video monitor with the Canon EOS utility. So today's video is going to be about testing these functions out and seeing how well the Surface performs at these tasks. Now I've been doing this type of thing for many years on the Apple laptop, which has always had enough power to handle Adobe Lightroom and use the EOS utility very comfortably. And uh, obviously I still use the Apple for my main editing, but I'm looking for a, uh, an option for when I'm out on location that's a little bit lighter and easier to handle than the laptop format. So what I really love about the Surface Pro is the fact that it's really that tablet format. You've got this nice kickstand that makes it very easy to prop on a bench somewhere. And even if you like, you can buy a mounting kit and connect it to your tripod and it's much lighter and easier to get around with than a laptop. So I think the format is really ideal for photographers and it's always been something that I've been considering and it was only recently when the new Surface Pro came out, the 2017 model that really had that um, the significant upgrade in processing power with the Kaby Lake processor that I began to take it seriously as an option. So let's have a look and see how well it performs at capturing images directly from the camera onto the screen, previewing those images, how long it takes in between, and also doing some basic edits. And this is often going to be used when you're out in a shoot and you've got your client next to you and they wanna see what you're doing and you wanna convert an image to black and white, for example, and adjust the contrast of the levels, maybe even the light balance, just so they can see uh, how the image is going to look when you go through the full editing process later on. The other thing that I tend to use out in the field is the Canon EOS Utility, where I'm able to mirror what's being viewed on this camera directly on the screen for video production. So I can set up my shot and get this lovely 12.9 inch screen view of the video I'm about to shoot. And again, I can set that up somewhere for a client to view. It's very easy to do, it's very lightweight and compact and uh, it's just gonna be a lot easier than using a keyboard. Now the one thing that we need to do to get both of these tasks happening is to tether our camera with the use of a USB cable. Now your Canon comes with that cable. You probably used it before just for transferring images into your computer. So I'm gonna grab one of those cables first. I've got one here in this case. And we're gonna hook up the camera and just connect it directly to Lightroom as our first test. So we go to the USB, the micro USB port on the side of the camera. And then we plug the standard USB into the USB 3 port on the Microsoft Surface on the side. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is turn on my camera so that when Lightroom opens up, it can recognize the camera when I select tether. So let's begin by opening up Lightroom. I'm gonna simply tap on its application icon, which I have here on the desktop. And I find that it takes about seven or eight seconds to load, which is about three seconds longer than it takes on my i7 MacBook Pro. As soon as it opens up, I'll simply tap on the tethered capture menu item in the file menu at the top. I can then name my session and choose where I want to save my photos to. That's all I need to do. Once I've done that, there is a new panel that appears usually towards the bottom of the screen and it shows you your camera info and has a shutter button to allow you to trigger the camera from the application itself. Now you can also use the camera to trigger as you normally would, or you can use this software based trigger. It's up to you. So I'm going to take my first shot. I'm timing it as the image comes across and it's taking around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seconds to import the image. And I've also tested this on the 5D Mark III with a very similar result. 
and also the image is a raw image which is about a 20 megapixel file so if i compare that against the experience i get on the macbook pro 2016 edition it normally takes about six or seven seconds so it's only one or two seconds difference in terms of the time it takes to import a file now the next thing i wanted to have a look at is how fast it is in actually using the Lightroom application, making a few basic edits and everything happens spontaneously without any delay. So it's really adequate to make some adjustments to your image in Lightroom. You can zoom in and out very easily just by tapping the screen and everything functions as you would expect very smoothly. So I'm very impressed with that. Now the next thing I wanna take a look at is the EOS utility and I mentioned that earlier. This is an app that comes with your Canon software that lets you monitor your video footage as you're shooting. So I'm going to open up the utility. I'm going to tap on the option to, for remote viewing, and that will bring up a screen which shows the viewfinder information right in the center. It's actually live video that we're seeing now. You can see my hand waving in front of the camera lens and uh, I'm just gonna test to see how seamless that animation is, if there's any stuttering or jittering, and it's pretty fluid. Everything looks really smooth, and definitely something you can monitor very comfortably. I've only got the screen in a small window at the moment, so I'll just make it a little bit larger. And uh, really, as you can see, it's going to be a very useful monitoring tool when I'm out on the road, so very happy with that. So I'm really, really impressed with how the Microsoft Surface Pro 2017 handles these applications. For video production, this is going to be my main unit that I take with me out in the field for monitoring. I just love how lightweight it is. It makes no noise whatsoever. I just can't hear a thing right now. And that's something that I can't even say about my Mac. So. It's just ideal and I don't need anything more than the i5 processor. I don't think I'll be getting much more speed or performance if I had have upgraded to the large processor. I think this mid-range unit handles these tasks really well. Having said that, if I was going to then use this as my main production machine to do all my editing, of course, I would consider the i7 model. But for the middle of the range model, for basic usage of capturing your photos, standard edits and doing a little bit of video work, the i5 seems to handle the tasks very well. Thanks for watching, I hope you found that information useful. As you can see by these demonstrations, the Microsoft Surface Pro 2017 handles the task of tethering images directly into Lightroom really well and also is great as a video monitor using the Canon EOS utility. If you wanna see more videos just like this one, be sure to subscribe to the channel. In fact, I've got one coming up very soon where I'll provide you with a full detailed review on the Microsoft Surface, using it with some other software uh, applications from the Adobe suite. So if you wanna see that, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.